This man wrote a story about some food and then discriminated the food and got in trouble. You gonna read that comment too? I'm gonna read that a little bit. Hi, my name is Gary Enrique Bradley Lopez and I am reading comments of my story called Jussie Smollett Lying While Black and Gay. Uh, this story was an opinion piece that I wrote about Jussie Smollett being um, arrested or indicted for uh, some accusations of being beaten up in Chicago and I said my statement was that he's gonna get arrested whether it's true or not but he's gonna get arrested because he is gay and black and these are the comments that I received the first comment is from Joseph Pimpernel bottom line is there really isn't much racism going on from white people so you have to manufacture fake racism to maintain your victim status there's no racism from white people. Look at our history books. All right, anyway, so Robert said, now thanks to people with your mindset, this person who indicted on 17 points by jury will go off scot-free without even a trial. You guarantee he wouldn't go to jail if he were white. I guarantee he wouldn't have gotten off at all if he wasn't gay, black, and a liberal celebrity. Check your privilege. Honey, what privilege do I got? The fact that you're even to make this comment and not get in trouble for it is showing your privilege. Chris Johnson, what a delusional piece. Good grief. He heard both communities you talk about by using his membership in both to further his own goal and nobody else's. Let me stop you there. That's exactly what I said in the article, so what are you bringing it up for like I didn't say that? Glenn Corboda, the author claims Smollett wouldn't be treated like he's being treated if he were white and then brings up something that happened 65 years ago to make his point. If Smollett goes to prison, it won't be because of his race or sexuality. It'll be because he staged a fake hate crime. Enough with the mind numbling stupid identity politics. Yep, identity politics. But what happened 65 years ago is still currently going on today and black people still face what's going on. So that makes a good point and I'm gonna continue bringing it up until y'all get in trouble for what y'all do. Hi, I'm uh, Sam Belfi. I wrote an article about the West Bottoms and about reasons why you should visit it. But uh, it seems I left out one very, very important person out of that article because I got an email from a man who said, you forgot on your West Bottoms article about one of the most frequent sites, Amagoni. Seven years, 50,000 visitors, but no mention? Hmm. Well, should have remembered that. I wrote a story reviewing a uh, restaurant downtown it's called Freestyle Pokey. I gave it a pretty decent review, but the owner didn't think I really uh, gave it the review that his restaurant really deserved. I mean, first of all, he told me that he, th he thanked me and appreciated the time that I took to write this article, even though there's some really unparalleled opinions and false accusations that don't even match the smallest percentage of the thousands of guests we serve. Ugh. Should probably quit this job, shouldn't I? And then, after about an essay's worth of talking, and I mean that when I say it, I'm not exaggerating, this is a whole page of angry. Then he goes and tells me, you should be ashamed at the level of journalism that has been produced here. And you know what? I really am ashamed. I should have wrote something worse. My name is Sam Danley, and I am the editor-in-chief of U News. And I am reading comments from my story, uh, Student Groups Sparks Controversy with Hate Speech is Free Speech sign. I have not read the comments on them yet. Ryan says, what a load of horse manure. YAF was not contacted in advance. That's not true. Most students supported the idea and sign. Also not true. Nobody linked it to an unrelated mentally ill shooter in another country, and the idea that Seth, being extremely polite and engaging others in a friendly discussion, is bullying or harassment is laughable. UMKC itself sends out stuff that offends me, as do student organizations. Do I have a right to not be subjectively offended? No. The only students fostering hate and intolerance were the students harassing the YAF students. Noah says this article is ludicrous for several reasons. 
the most prominent being that YAF sign proclaiming hate speech is constitutionally protected free speech by no means alludes to supporting or even endorsing hate speech. Okay, this is one thing that bothered me about this event or this whole story. People are like, it, we're not supporting hate speech. Okay, if you had a sign that said like, abortion is illegal, that would be interpreted as supporting abortion. So you can't just say hate speech equals free speech and then say that you're not supporting hate speech because like, you are. As a university, we owe it to ourselves to be better and not tolerate such wrongs. What's wrong, the story? He is ashamed that such behavior occurred on our campus. So you're ashamed that I wrote a story about people having a really controversial sign, but you're not ashamed that people on campus are supporting hate speech? Okay. Sincerely, a perturbed UMKC law student. Well, sir, stay perturbed.